Well, hello, hello. So I know it's been over a week, right? I was hoping to have been back to teach you part two. Well, it's not part two. This is Business Success 101. Who am I? I'm Pastor Garlinda Price with Common Ground Ministry, and the Lord has called me to you. If you are a business owner or a marketplace minister, welcome, welcome, welcome. And so I'm going to continue teaching from the book that the Lord blessed me to write. You can get the book over at my website at www.garlandaprice.com. What am I teaching? So this is the workbook that you're going to want to purchase on the website. I actually discounted it so you can get it at a great price. It's normally $34.95. It's only $24.95. Again, it's www.garlandaprice.com. Who am I? Why am I qualified to teach you in any way? I'm going to share that with you in a second. I'm just going to adjust um, the screen right quick. So I just want to share with you that the Lord has called me to women in business specifically women in business but i've also coached men i'm super excited because 31 years i've been in business i started my 30 years right is it 31 i've been in business a long time let's put it at that way I mean, so what happened was i started 32 years that's what it was right i got tongue-tied a second because i had to think about it 32 years in business i started my first business at 19 years old designing jewelry and selling jewelry I did home parties. I sold my cufflinks to Nordstrom's department store in the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area and just grew from there. From there, I owned salons. Um, I owned successful salons, too, in the state of Virginia. We relocated back to North Carolina, and I ran spas when we moved back home, and then the Lord called me into real estate. When I went into real estate, I had no prior experience selling real estate. I actually had been licensed in Virginia, but because I owned the salon, I never sold houses and I was scared to sell, right? Because I felt like I didn't know enough. I was scared. I didn't know the market. And it really would have been the best time to sell because I was there during boom time, right? So the Lord called me into real estate and that is where I made my first six figures as a licensed real estate broker. And that was before I was an owner. Currently, I own Fusion Properties LLC right here in North Carolina. We are residential and commercial brokerage. We also do land development. And just recently, we've launched a construction side to our business where we're doing full-blown renovations, upwards of $29,000 because we are not licensed general contractors. So we max out at that $29,000 mark. So I'm qualified to talk to you about business. I've made money, I've lost money, and everywhere in between, and I'm working towards my first million dollars. So I'm super excited about that, but enough about me, right? Enough of that jibber jabber. Why did the Lord call me to you? On the back of my book, I want to read to you the reference scripture that the Lord gave me when he called me to write this book. And the book was initially called 30 Days to Greatness. And when I got the book finished, I said, okay, Lord, I'm finished. I'm ready to go to print. The Lord said, well, how can you be finished without me? Right? Because you see, as a licensed and ordained pastor, the book had nothing about scripture, nothing about God. And, and I had left out the most significant part of the business, which was God. Right? Because God is the CEO of all my corporations. Amen? And so Luke 5 and 4, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Now, see, I shared this on the last video, so I won't go all the way into it. But if you read that passage of scripture, when Jesus came by the lake of Gennesaret, Peter was washing his nets and putting them up. He was finished for the day. But the Lord said, take out. He said, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And so Peter said, well, Lord, we've been fishing all night, but at thine will, glory to God. So you got to have an at thine will in your spirit as it relates to doing business. Because why has God called us as the children of God, as the church of God, as Zion into marketplace ministry? Because it is the way that we're going to lead others to the knowledge and the saving grace of Jesus Christ. It is in marketplace ministry that we're going to get to pray for other people. It's in marketplace ministry that we're going to get to impact the change of the world globally depending on what your product or business is it doesn't even matter it could be cookies or cake it could be cosmetics it could be books it could be poetry it could be services it could be whatever god uses for his glory it could be compressors and refrigerators it doesn't matter as long as god is glorified the back of my book goes on to say launch of 30 days to greatness is god's way of showing you and i that he has called us into marketplace ministry and that he indeed did call for your business or businesses to be an extension of his outreach that will lead and draw others to the knowledge of his saving grace and to make a successful living financially doing his will. See, God said, I'm going to pay you while you're in the marketplace. Oh, glory to God. So it's not important that I've made six figures. I stopped by this to give you the blueprint. So I'm going to be teaching you from my workbook because that's what the Lord told me to do. 
tonight we're going to be doing 102. So launch a 30 days to greatness business success video 102, okay? And so just to let you know also, Pastor Garland, the M. Price, that's me, helps to reveal the parallel between God's word and your calling to prove to you that truly God has called you to success and that money is not synonymous with evil or greed, quite the contrary. In Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 3, now it shall be, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments, which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. If you are ready to change your life, the life of your business and all that God has revealed for you or revealed to you to complete for his glory in the earth realm, and in the spirit realm, then you must launch it into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Love you, Pastor Garlinda M. Price. So that's on the back of the book. So last time we talked about uh, um, doing a self-examination. So we're going to do part two of the self-examination. This will not be a long video. I want you to pause the video right here. Go get pen and paper because you're going to want to take notes. But also down in the description box, I'm going to put the... Um, questions for the self-evaluation in there as well so you don't miss it and in case you find this video out of order and you haven't seen part part one i'll put part one at the end of this video so you can watch it and get the other questions as well so let's get started so step one of starting a business launching your business restarting um first time thinking about it writing your business business plan whatever wherever you find yourself it doesn't matter right god allows do-overs and u-turns praise him so step one, get honest with yourself and complete the self-evaluation. Don't skip this step, okay? So the next question that we're going to start with is, are you in the right area of your specific business to be successful? In other words, is this your natural bent? Is this the natural gift that God has given you, right? I remember doing businesses that I wanted to do, so I was in God's permissive will and not in God's divine will. That means that he permitted me to do it, but it wasn't where my blessing was. But his divine will is where he's called me to be. Right, so God is going to bless us in our divine will, divine purpose, as it's according to what He has called us to do and to be. So you got to ask yourself the business that you're thinking about doing, currently doing, did before, relaunching now, wherever you find yourself, is it your natural gift? Are you passionate about it? And people say, well, you don't need passion. Oh, I beg to differ. You need passion because when it's not working, or it's not growing, or it's not, you're not making money, or it's not going according to the way that you desired it to go, your passion is going to keep you going because that's what's going to fuel your enthusiasm. So you do need passion. Glory to God. So you want to ask yourself, are you in the right area of your specific business to be successful? And I encourage you to ask other people, do you think this is my natural gift? And maybe you've heard people say something like this, you should do that as a business. You're very good at that. You should do that because you're naturally gifted at that. Girl, you do that like the back of your, like you know that like the back of your hand. Guy, you should do that. That is your calling, right? I remember what uh, whatever businesses I've had, people in the past said to me, that's your gift. You should be doing that, right? And when you get in the wheelhouse of God and in the flow of what God has called you to do, you will begin to see the blessings of God and the resources of God and the provision of God and the education of God move in your life. See, sometimes you don't earn, but you learn. That's, that's not a curse, right? Sometimes you don't earn, but you learn. And I think a lot of times I used to see lack of, I used to see lack of income from the business I was growing or working on as failure. But it wasn't failure because you got to have your proven ground. You got to learn, right? You got to learn how to do without and still build your house before you're able to continue to grow your business. There's a scripture like that in the Word of God. I want to pull it up right quick. And I did a, um, a sermon message on it last week right here on YouTube. So I encourage you to go listen to our ministry videos. So it's Proverbs 24 and 27. It says, an honest answer, well, let's do 26. Proverbs 24, 26. An honest answer given is like a kiss on the lips. Complete your outdoor work and prepare your field. After that, you can build your house. Do not testify. Well, so we don't need, I don't want to say we don't need 28. 28 is not relevant to what we're talking about. So Proverbs 24, 27. Complete your outdoor work and prepare your field. After that, you can build your house. In other words, you got to till the soil and, and prepare the ground first. You got to do all the hard work and the heavy lifting before you can begin to reap the rewards and live off the rewards of your business. See, a lot of people, and you're not like this, I know it, right? They want to 
make money in their business and then spend the money instead of reinvesting the money back into their business then they say oh it didn't work and i didn't make money it did work and you did make money but you ate it you spent it right so the lord says prepare your work out in the field right and then build your house the next question you want to answer yourself is how do you measure success because if you only measure success by money then you're always going to think you're failing when you don't have any or you're always going to think you're failing when um when the accounts aren't growing like you think they should go, when you don't have the working capital that you'd like to have. So how do you measure success, right? And only you can define that for yourself. How I measure success is when I've learned, when I've grown. I'm in the real estate field, so I shared that with you. And so for every designation that you have in real estate behind your name, if you've ever seen a realtor and they have these little initials behind their name, I read um, through the National Association of Realtors a study that said for every designation behind your name, it's worth 10 grand. Hello? That's how I made it to six figures in real estate because I kept working towards the designations. I don't have 10 designations, but I was already making, let's say, 45000 I was already making 80000 So when I got to the 45000 mark, I began to get designations. When I got to the $80,000 mark, I began to get more designations. So every designation I got added another $10,000. Now, everybody's field is different, but regardless, the principles of business are still the same how do you measure success so you can't just measure it by money you got to answer that for yourself so i measure success by did i learn am i growing am i expanding am i doing everything every day that i need to do in order to be successful and if so proverbs 14 23 guarantees me this in all labor there's profit and so it guarantees you the same promise from god amen what will you do after this what is your exit strategy for example will you sell your business or businesses will your family inherit it etc now we don't need to get lost in the weeds and go down the rabbit trail to figure out how they're going to do that and everything else just answer the question is your business or service inheritable right and so you may say that it's not right but if you are in a service related business and you have a client book or a book of clients that's a book of business that's sellable right if you are in a business where your son or daughter or your children can take over the business then it's inheritable but you don't need to go through the weeds to figure that out we can talk about that later on what makes you stand out better than your competition what is your unique selling proposition okay ecclesiastes says it best there's nothing new under the sun right but regardless you have the anointing to do what god has called you to do you have an oil and you can do it in a way that no one else does it see in real estate if you just answer your phone you can beat the brakes off the next person because half the brokers don't answer the telephone right and I, that's been consistent that i've seen over the last 11 to 12 years of doing real estate people are not great communicators so what sets me apart from my competition i'll give you a few examples i'm fun not only am i fun i'm knowledgeable not only am i knowledgeable i'm great at establishing relationships early on so that my clients trust me i'm a trusted advisor to high-end clients glory to god what sets me you might say well that doesn't set you apart everybody's not fun I, I do what I say I'm going to do when I say I'm going to do it. I answer my phone. I communicate. I would outserve the best of them. Glory to God. So you got to figure out what is your unique selling proposition. I'm going to outserve everybody. And if I don't have the answer, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going balls to the wall, right? I know a pastor. I just said balls to the wall. But it's the truth, right? No one is going to outserve me. You're not going to outfund me with my clients. Amen? So you got to think about what is your unique selling proposition? What sets you apart from everyone else in addition to that as a real estate brokerage in residential commercial land development not very many real estate companies that are independently owned and operated meaning non-franchise offer a construction leg to their business so that means if you purchase a house from marvin and garland the price with fusion properties you can also hire us to be contractors to work on that property as well that sets me apart from at least 90 percent of the other brokerages in town if not more because they have to go hire an outside contractor for their clients whereas we can do up to twenty nine thousand dollars worth of work that is my unique selling proposition amen then the other thing is what additional education do you seek and demand of yourself above and beyond what everyone else is doing you've got to always be learning when you learn you earn you've got to always be learning so think about free education that you can get on google university think about classes that you can save money and take over time think about things that you can study and learn that will set you apart from everybody else and it doesn't have to be something expensive but think about what additional education do you seek and demand of yourself above and beyond what everyone else is doing see a lot a lot of people in real estate they just do their ce their continuing education 
and they do just enough to get by right to get the next client but you got to be better than the best i don't i don't have any competition and neither do you i wake up with my competition because i only want to be better than i was yesterday i'm not trying to compete with joe blow down the street i only want to be better than garlinda was yesterday and that's who you have to put your eye on who is the prize who's the mark or who do i see in the market and i want to emulate and i want to be like them not be like them like you don't like who you are but you want to be successful like they're successful find that person and mirror what it is that they do the next question what are your business hours do you do something for one to three hours daily to move your business forward you may be working a full-time job you may work two full-time jobs right but what where can you find the time to fit it in and do you work your business at least one to three hours a day and you may say well Garlinda, i don't have one to three hours a day you have before work after work your lunch break before work, which means you got to sacrifice and get up earlier. After work, which means after you eat dinner and get your kids situated, you got to cut the TV off and you got to work on your business. If this is what you really want to do, right? We talked about in the last business, that some, in the last video, some people are interested and other people are committed. Glory to God. Next, do you meet new people daily? If so, how many? If you aren't meeting new people daily, why not? You got to ask yourself, am I marketing and sharing my business with everyone every day? Not necessarily just asking them for the sale, but am I actually telling them, hey, you may or may not know it, but I own a real estate company. Hey, you may or may not know, know it, but I have an incredible opportunity with my company, Glamit Cosmetics, and we wholesale beauty to those that want to make money from home. Whatever your elevator pitch is in your elevator speech, are you telling enough people about it every day that you can convert that to a sale? Do you meet new people daily? If so, how many? If you aren't meeting new people daily, why not? Are you afraid? Do you have a sense of lack? Do you just not know what to say? It's important for you to write that down so that we can deal with it. And you can call me or email me and say, Garland, this, these were some of the answers to my self-evaluation. My phone number I'm going to put in the description box and my email address I'm going to put in the description box because I want to see you win and I want to see you succeed. And, and when I teach once, I learn twice, right? So as I'm teaching you, even I'm learning so I can get better. And then... Who is dependent on you? If you fail, what are the consequences? Who will be affected in the event you fail? See, my kids will be affected in the event I fail because I got to pay college tuition for a current 17-year-old that starts college in the fall and tuition, honey. Ooh, Lord have mercy in the name of the sanctified Lord when I got that bill, right? <laughs> and even with scholarships, I have a 14-year-old that's going to college in four years, right? So I can't fail. Failure is not even an option. I have a ministry that depends on me to fund it, right? I have a household that depends on me to be successful. I have ancestors that depend on, that depend on me to be successful. My mom and dad, even at 51, have an expectation of me like, Garland, I know we ain't spend all this money to send you to college for you to do nothing. Glory to God. And I have an expectation of myself. But most of all, above all of that, I don't want to fail God and the gifts that he's given me. And, need, and I know you don't either. So answer that question honestly. Who is depending on you? If you fail, what are, what are the consequences and who will be affected? The next question, can your family, spouse, dependents count on you to do what you said you're going to do? See, too many times, and I, I had a coaching client earlier today. If you're interested in coaching, you can sign up for coaching. My packages are, I discounted them during the coronavirus because I want people to be able to have affordable coaching. You can find that on my website at garlandaprice.com. I was coaching with a friend of mine earlier today, and we were talking about, being a woman of your word, doing what you say you're going to do, right? Even when the enthusiasm has waned off, right? And what people, what I hear Zion say and believers in Christ say is, oh, I miss God. No, you didn't miss God. You just don't want to, you don't want the challenge. You didn't miss God and you didn't hear God wrong. When it got hard, you quit. You got to be honest with yourself and you got to hold yourself accountable and say, I got this. You got to have stick to it. You can't have an ounce of quit in your bone. Hello? In your bones and so if you aren't successful with this what is your backup plan see I don't have a backup plan I have a degree in marketing right my degree is in business administration with a minor in mark with a major in marketing a minor in management I don't want to go work for anybody I just told you I've been an entrepreneur for 32 years now in there flitting and flirting through there I had jobs but trust you me that they did not last I knew at some point without a shadow of a doubt when I believed I was an entrepreneur I went all in no one is going to pay me what I can make for myself, and I'm willing to take the risk of not getting paid at all or getting paid, not getting paid at all or getting paid it all, right? So you got to ask yourself, 
if you're not successful with this, what's your backup plan? And I don't want to be an employee, so that's not even a backup plan for me. So I got to get it. I got to go to work and get it in, and so do you, because you got to be committed to yourself. Are you a business owner? If you are, if you were your client, could you be entrusted with their business? <sighs> that's tough. Are you a business owner? Yes or no? You should be saying yes. If you are, if you were your client, would you trust you with your business the way you currently operate right now? Ooh, and I had to ask myself that question. I said, I had to repent. Lord, I can do better than what I'm doing. Glory to God. Hold yourself to a higher standard and work with excellence as unto the Lord. That's what the word tells us to do. Amen. And then are you worth the money you expect to get paid in terms of the level of service you provide? See, I hear people all the time saying, oh, they don't want to pay me what I'm worth. They don't want to pay me my money. Are you worth it? I'm just asking, right? Because getting paid, and I say this all the time to coaching clients, and I'm also a member of the Breakpoint coaching staff. Shout out to Dr. Patrice Carter. I teach marketing to their new coaches. Um, but a lot of times people want to get paid all this money, but they ain't worth it. And what I mean by that is they don't provide value for the service. They don't provide value for the money. They're not telling anyone anything different than somebody else is telling them. And so, and not only that, they're only speaking in theory. I don't want to talk theory. I want to know that if you're telling me I can make a million dollars, that you've already made it. If you're telling me I can earn $100,000, you've already earned it. If you're telling me I can earn $100, you've at least made $100 in your business. I'm not going to be coached by someone that hasn't done it or gone where I want to go because they can't get me there is then it's only theory and textbook and it's not actuality so the question again is are you worth the money you expect to get paid in terms of the level of service you provide because money is a byproduct of service i say it all the time if you serve people with your whole heart with a godly nature and do the best that you can do and you go all out for your customer you're going to get paid so the so money doesn't have to be the focus i'm going to get paid because i'm going to serve i'm going to establish a relationship and i'm going to go all out to get them what it is that they want that's legal ethical and moral right and do the best that I can for them. And me getting paid is just a byproduct of service. So you don't have to focus on the money. Are you worth what you're trying to charge? And then finally, do you have minimum five sources of business leads? Do you name, Can you name five places where you can get business from? Is it work, church, friends and family, right? People that you, that you um, influence, social media, right? Past clients and services. Can you name five places that you can get business from? Childhood friends, college friends, right? Former work associates. You got to write down five places that you can get business leads from because you're going to wear your family, you're going to burn through family and friends. If you've ever done any type of network marketing or direct selling business, you know that to be a fact. So you got to write down right here do you have five? minimum sources of business leads so we're going to end right there again i'm pastor garlinda price i'm your coach with launch at 30 days to greatness six figure success with biblical principles this is section this is number two of our video on the self-evaluation of starting and launching or restarting or building your business from the ground up to be a six figure business and you can do it so i want you to go and purchase my book so you can follow along with the book as i'm teaching and the book is this workbook it's Launch at 30 Days to Greatness, Six Figure Success of Biblical Principles. The workbook is on my website at www.garlandaprice.com. And I'm going to put the questions down in the description box below. But get your book ordered. It will get to you ASAP. Okay? God bless you. And I'll talk to you soon on the next video.